Grandma and I lived in a cheap third-floor apartment. Two bedrooms, one bath, a small kitchen, and the living room had a lovely view of the sewage treatment plant. The smell wasn't lovely. I'd been living there for 15 years, but Grandma had been there for 40. Only God knows how old the building was. I'm Quinn Rigby, a junior, and I would have graduated in a year with a degree in finances. God, that's so boring. I'd rather do anything but that. Against Grandma's wishes, I recently changed majors to what I really wanted. What had she said? How do you think you'll make money if you don't get a job that gives some kind of income? And I tried to explain. I've told you before, I don't want kids and I'm never getting married. Grandma patiently sighed. Look, this isn't the old days. Guys get married to guys all the time. They even adopt, or have surrogates, or foster. When the right guy comes along, well, you can't fight fate. Look at reality, Grandma, I said. Between your pension and my job, I can barely afford to take care of me, let alone us. How am I supposed to take care of another guy, let alone children? Stop worrying, Grandma said. Why don't you want children? You're healthy and smart and can sing, and I think you're handsome. A face like yours will make the boys jealous. You only think that because you're my grandma, I said. You'd make any guy happy, she said. Fess up. What's wrong with children? You already know the story. Right after Mom died, Dad dumped me in the foster system and disappeared 15 years ago, I said. If CPS hadn't found you, I'd still be there. I don't want to even think about that happening to my kids. You're not your dad, she said. We'll make it work. Besides, you have a head for money. That's because you made me get a job as a car washer at 14, I said. Now I'm working full-time at the restaurant and going to school, and I keep auditioning at Willoughby's Community Theater, but it's going nowhere. I'm getting tired, Grandma. Grandma whirled on me and said, Good Lord, stop trying to carry the whole world on your shoulders. My pension won't cover much, but it will keep a roof over our heads, and your job can pay for college, even if I don't agree with your major. Sorry, Grandma, I said, feeling a little guilty. Life just seems hard right now. Grandma took her old lady glasses off and stared at me. When was the last time you had any fun? When was the last time you went on a date? When was the last time you got laid? Grandma, I yelled, that's none of your business. You would deny your aged grandmother the simple pleasures of life, she chuckled. This is an order. Get your butt on a date before you drive yourself crazy. And me too. I know what you're trying to do, I laughingly said. You want me out of the house for the night so you can invite the man in 305 over for a home-cooked meal. You should respect your elders, Grandma said, pretending to frown. She threw a dish towel at me and I laughingly left for work. I loved my Grandma, and even though she is pretty independent, she can't get out much anymore. Grandma has a bright pink walker she decorated with stickers and bells. She has arthritis real bad in both feet, and a couple of her toes curled at odd angles. Between work, chores, college, auditioning, and taking care of Grandma, I didn't have any free time left to date or have fun. I haven't seen my friends in weeks. Are they even my friends anymore? Grandma suspects, but she doesn't realize how exhausted my soul is. I'm only 22, and feel like 72, and somehow... I managed to make it day to day. All through high school, I acted in plays, sang in every talent show, and was an extra in a deodorant commercial. The year after high school, I was an extra in a Lifetime romance movie. Maybe you've seen it, Falling for the Holidays. My big part was a background shopper. Someday, I want to make it big. I want to be in a musical. Life currently has other plans though sometimes I feel a little guilty for feeling this way. It's hard taking care of Grandma. In the evenings, I'm a waiter for Mykonos, a high-end restaurant that also has a dance floor, and Saturday nights, a live band. Plus, 
special events like Friday's special wedding rehearsal dinner. That's tonight. With spouses and kids and guests and relatives, 50 extra people swamped us. It was more people than we could fit in the special banquet hall reserved for large functions. But not this large. We had to hold the rehearsal dinner in the main dining area and seated our customers in the special banquet hall, which was a little awkward because two servers never came in tonight. I was one of the five waiters for the wedding party. They'd also requested our stage be set up for karaoke. Who ever heard of karaoke at a wedding rehearsal dinner? Turns out, the bride and groom love karaoke and plan to get drunk and party until we kicked them out. It's a combination wedding dinner slash bachelor slash bachelorette party because tomorrow morning is their wedding. Somebody is going to be very hungover for their 10 a.m. ceremony. Don't look at me. I'm not the bartender. Except for the occasional cheap beer. I don't drink. Hello, I'm one step above broke. Believe it or not, my assigned table is the bridal table, and I'm in charge of taking orders and bussing the table for the bride, groom, best man, maid of honor, bride's parents, groom's parents, and two of their siblings. Ten people total. Staying on top of all their orders, getting regular drinks for them, bussing their table, and getting the odd stare from several women, including the bride, and a couple men. I didn't have time to do more than react. The father and mother of the bride looked annoyed at something. The bride and groom kept getting louder. The maid of honor kept getting drunker and tried hitting on one of the groomsmen. Well, the five groomsmen played some sort of drinking game. One guy sipped a glass of water and looked bored. He sat at the bridal party table, so I'd a guess he'd be the brother of the bride. He had worn a gray suit jacket that matched his slacks, but that was draped over his chair. I wandered over to clear some plates near him. Whatever cologne he was wearing, it was a man magnet. Wow, this man smelled good. Wait a second. Was that a small rainbow flag on his lapel? The night's getting better. He had freshly styled black hair that I could run my fingers through, if given a chance. Blue eyes that threatened to swallow my soul in one gulp and the loose button-down light green shirt he wore could not hide the interplay of the muscles underneath. Lean, taut, and tight described his body. His jaw was strong and set. No way this man shaved every day, but he had for tonight. His hands caught my attention. Long, sensitive fingers. This man either was an artist or played an instrument. Intense and physical, this man gave off serious college student vibes. A worried grimace crossed his forehead. He was uncomfortable with something. Then he noticed me staring. Oops. He picked up his water glass and subtly saluted me. I shrugged, smiled, and said, What's a cute guy like you doing in a dump like this? He sort of laughed and said, Brother of the bride. I have to be here. Hooray for you, I said. Are you single? Unfortunately, it's a long story, he said. But you never know who'll come your way. Amen to that, I said, and took the dirty dishes back to the dishwasher. As I was setting down dessert for everyone, a gooey chocolate lava cake as requested by the groom, the bride, who had definitely had three too many, got up on the stage. She squinted into the karaoke prompter, selected a song, and as the music played, she belted out the words to a familiar song, but she screeched it so bad I didn't recognize which song it was. Get me out of here. She's terrible. Can't she find the melody? I went back to the kitchen and got more lava cake in a vain attempt to save my ears. When I returned, the noise was worse. The groom had joined her. I winced and tried to ignore. Five cats fighting in a metal dumpster filled with tin cans while simultaneously gargling broken glass would sound better. When would this night end? The brother of the bride took off his tie, draped it over the chair, 
and undid the top two buttons of his shirt before he noticed me staring. Again, he did have nice hair and nice pecs, the biceps pressed against his sleeves in a very nice way. Help, call a doctor because my ears are bleeding, he said. My grandparents already left because they couldn't handle the noise. Do you sing, I asked, and gave him a slice of lava cake. A little, he said, breaking into a not-so-shy smile. This cake is too big for me. Maybe you'd share it with me? I'm Nelson Waters. My sister is the one getting married. Quinn, my break is in fifteen, I said, and slightly nodded. Bring an extra spoon, he said. Or we could share, I said, flirting just a little bit. Who needs spoons, Nelson said. Let's use our fingers and feed each other. On our first date, I teased. If Nelson hadn't guessed I was gay and interested in him, he would now. Nelson grinned in a very naughty way and said, It might get messy, but I like messy, so bring napkins. I liked this guy. He wasn't shy, was a little bit playful, a little bit naughty, and he thinks fast. Suddenly, I couldn't wait for break. First thing I'd do is get his phone number. Maybe Grandma was right. Maybe I need to find a date. I had just picked up a few dirty dishes and returned for more when I heard the drunk bride yell, Beat that, Nelson. Get up on the stage, coward. Everybody knows I can sing better than you. I stepped out so I could see what was happening and leaned against a wall not far from the stage to watch. Nelson got out of his seat, saw me, and gave me a chin lift. I mouthed, Go for it. Nelson got up on stage, clicked something on the selector, and the background music started. Something jazzy and fun. No way. I knew this song. I'd sung this back when I was a senior in the high school talent show. And I'd sung it one night to an old boyfriend, right before we got, um, uh, romantic. Nelson's voice was clear and clean and beautiful, a tenor with a steady professional quality. Wow! He's good. Why wait till break? Before I knew it, I stepped up on stage and sang background vocals, harmonizing with him until the sound was divine. Nelson looked back, saw me, and grinned. Without missing a single note, we continued singing together. He winked at me, I winked back, and we began alternating parts and harmonizing and slightly dancing. We had never practiced, didn't even know each other, but as we sang together, as we harmonized, as we had fun, the heads in the crowd turned and the audience began to clap in time with the music. Suddenly, the music shifted to a slow, intimate part. Nelson put his arm around me and our heads, our faces, our lips were close together and we sang together and the music became magic. Suddenly... What happened? We kissed, completely spontaneous, like it was part of the act, except there was no act. We were two guys singing about being in love, didn't even know each other, and did he kiss me? Did I kiss him? Did it just happen accidentally? Did it matter? I enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. When we broke apart, I leaned in to kiss him again. It was a little sloppy, a little rushed, and we both were giggling and grinning. The crowd broke out in cheers and applause. We both bowed, laughed, and quickly hugged. We must not have had enough of each other because we kissed again as we left the stage. Wait a second, we were complete strangers five minutes ago. The crowd had loved our impromptu performance and still clapped and cheered. However, the bride did not. She pouted in her seat, glaring at me and Nelson. That was fun, Nelson said, laughing and full of life. When is your next break and we'll do it again? About two hours, I said. Are you asking me for a date? You know it, he yelled. I expected my boss to say something about socializing with the guests, but he never did. He congratulated me on my singing voice, then ordered me to start clearing the tables. Time went fast, but Nelson never left the restaurant. 
On my next break, I found Nelson standing around talking to people I later learned were his cousins. The bride and groom were on the dance floor, gleefully, drunkenly, haphazardly, dangerously dancing. When the bride saw us heading to the stage, she furiously rushed to the stage, pounded on the selector with her thumb until it finally selected some song. She yelled, this is our song. It was playing on the radio the night we met. She screamed some off-key love song to the groom. The groom kept giggling. Somebody had a serious snootful. With the bride, make that two somebodies. Her voice sounded like a hearing aid squealing and eventually shorting out. The parents of the bride grimaced. One of the cousins covered her ears. I'm sure that some dog howled in the distance and the mirror in the restroom broke. After she finished singing, Nelson took my hand and led me to the stage. No matter how we hit the buttons on the selector, it wouldn't change songs. Whatever the bride had done, she jammed the machine and it started playing the same love song the bride had sung. Nelson and I smiled at each other and shrugged. It was a cute tune. I'd heard it before, so I knew the melody, but never sung it before. Good thing it was a slow dance kind of song with a steady beat, so it gave me an instant to harmonize. The best part? The prompter played the words which meant I could fake knowing it. Something odd happened while we sang. We harmonized like before. We slowly danced while singing. I don't know when, but we were holding hands and singing about love. I could swear our emotions were real. We alternated parts. We acted like long-lost lovers and stared into each other's eyes. And suddenly, I wasn't acting. I don't think Nelson was either. Our harmony was deep, was beautiful, struck me in the soul. I put my heart into that song, singing about the love of my life, who happened to be Nelson, about a man I barely knew, about a man I suddenly fell deeply in love with. That's impossible. You can't fall in love with somebody after a song. Can you? With the way Nelson looked at me, with the way he held me, with the gentle way he kissed me, I did fall in love with him. As we closed the song, both Nelson and I hugged. Nelson whispered so the audience couldn't hear, I need your phone number. I caressed his cheek and said, Does that mean we can do this again? I've never met anyone who sings as beautifully as you do, he said. We had one last kiss before we faced the audience. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Except one. The bride's look could have frozen Niagara Falls. You sing amazing, I said to Nelson. It's like I could feel what you were singing about, the emotions you put into it. Nelson took hold of my hand and said, I couldn't have done it without you. It's going to sound crazy and beautiful, but after the way you sang, I could fall in love with you. There was something shining in his eyes, tears maybe, and wonder filled his face with awe. I think I must have looked the same way, because neither one of us could stop smiling. I gave him my number and then worked until the restaurant closed. The wedding party finally left. However, the song Nelson and I sang flowed constantly through my mind. My boss yelled, The sooner we get this place cleaned up, the sooner you can call your duet partner. It was after one before I could leave, and Nelson waited for me outside the restaurant. The two of us walked into the cool night air. Once again, in the magic of the night, our hands found each other, and we walked in the early morning darkness until we found a park with swings. As we sat on them, slowly swinging and still holding hands, we talked. Nelson had played for years. His folks had made him and his sister take music lessons all their lives. Nelson thrived, even had a music scholarship. His sister did not. She hated it. Maybe it wasn't important what we talked about, just that we talked and laughed and just enjoyed being with each other. We slowly walked back to our cars, but this time our arms were about each other's waists. His warmth thrilled me. His voice enthralled me. His kiss enchanted me. Tomorrow, he said, the wedding is at ten, and they asked me to sing right before the happy couple repeats their vows. Come sing with me. Do I know the song? I asked. It's the one we sang tonight, Nelson said. 
I don't know the words, I said. I was reading from the prompter. Leave that to me, Nelson said. Before we went our separate ways, I kissed him. Or did he kiss me? Or was it the universe drawing us together? His kiss reminded me of all that was right in the world, of all that could happen between us, of the magic the music made. It promised something more in the future. For a little while, I wasn't tired, and life was filled with adventure and fun. Grandma was already in bed after I got home. After I climbed into bed, I received a text from Nelson. Simple solution, he texted. Texted Mom. She had a backup copy of the music and said we sounded good together. I couldn't stop smiling as I texted him back. We were up until four, texting, but it only seemed like minutes. Five hours of sleep later, I pulled my suit from the closet and a couple of ties. Which one looks best? I asked Grandma. The silver one. Why are you getting so dressed up? It's a Saturday, Grandma asked, shuffling around the living room with her walker. Last night, I met a guy, I said. As in a date? Grandma asked. I couldn't stop smiling. Well, Grandma scrambled up some eggs and fried some bacon. I dressed and told her about Nelson, about singing karaoke last night, about being invited to sing at the wedding. I told you that you needed a little fun, she said, serving the eggs and bacon. On your way, remember to buy some lemonade to keep your vocal cords clear. Will do, Grandma, I said. And get some breath mints, in case you get frisky, Grandma said. Grandma, I protested, starting to smile. And find you some decent condoms, not the cheap things that always break, Grandma said. Mortified, I yelled, Grandma! Grandma laughed and got the milk from the fridge. Like I haven't heard it all. Whatever you do, have fun. Tell Nelson he needs to come over for Sunday dinner, because I want to meet the man that's making you smile. Shortly after, I hopped in our ancient car, a silver Chevrolet Malibu, and drove to the wedding venue. I'd never been more excited to see someone than I was to see Nelson. For a few hours, I could leave my problems behind. I arrived a half hour before the wedding. As soon as I texted Nelson, he came running out wearing a tux and a grin. The smile on his face convinced me that being here was the right thing to do. We'd only known each other for what? Twelve hours, and we couldn't get enough of each other. After a quick hug and a slow kiss, he took my hand and led me to the wedding pavilion. It was an outdoor wedding located under a pavilion draped with sheer white panels that moved in the slight breeze. Small white lights dotted the pillars and the wooden framework above. The whole place was spruced about with twisting garlands of white and light blue roses, creating a realm of magic. Nelson saw somebody he knew and left me alone for a moment. I took the whole place in. The showcase, of course, was the main platform where the officiant would stand. The bridesmaids and the groomsmen would stand to the sides, in front of sculptured topiaries, decorated with white lights. The bride and groom would stand under an arch also draped with white roses and white lights, where they would say their vows. The entire pavilion was decorated with white lights, small white and light blue roses, and light blue and white satin ribbons. Several people fluttered about the decorations, making last-minute corrections. I would never tell anyone this. But sometimes I wanted this. I wanted a man who would be loyal and love me and make me feel special. Somebody who would take the tiredness and exhaustion and hardness of my life and make an almost forgotten foster kid whose dad didn't want him feel magical and special. Get a grip, Quinn, I scolded myself. Life isn't a fairy tale. A caterer made final touch-ups to the four-tier wedding cake decorated with white and light blue frosting roses. A tiny bride in white and a groom in black topped the cake. What would the cake look like if it had two grooms on top, surrounded with peach-colored roses? I must be crazy. I don't even want to get married. It's too expensive, and who would want to marry a poor guy like me anyway? After all, except for Grandma, I don't have a family, and we're not rich, and I'm not popular, and I dress in the cheapest clothes I can find. 
Not like these people. These people were popular and rich, and based on the clothes I saw last night, they shopped at really nice stores. At a glance, the bride and groom expected about a hundred people for the ceremony. Fifty for the bride, fifty for the groom. If I married, I'd only need one chair for Grandma and a half dozen for my friends. My side would be very, very small. Yup, marriage is out of the question. Off to the left side of the main platform was a beautiful white French country style baby grand piano. Not even the theater department had pianos that nice. A woman approached that I recognized from the night before, and she gave me a quick hug. You must be Quinn, she said, and handed me some sheet music. I'm the mother of the bride, and Nelson's mother too, and I appreciate you doing this. You and my son sang beautifully last night, and I can't wait for everybody to hear. I've placed an extra chair next to Nelson's, so you'll have a place to sit. Follow his cues about when to perform, but it's pretty easy to figure out. However, all I can offer is a glass of wine. That is, if you drink, or if you're like Nelson, a Sprite, if you don't drink, and a slice of wedding cake when the time comes. I can't believe how nervous I am. It's okay, Mom, Nelson said, walking up to us. He smelled of peppermint? Had he popped a breath mint? It will go perfectly, he said. Are you ready for this, Quinn? I keep telling myself that everything is going to be all right, his mom said. But I didn't even sleep last night. Anyway, I've spoken to the caterer, and Quinn, if you're still here, they said that it wouldn't be a problem serving you at our luncheon. I was so panicked I over-ordered everything. Thank you, I said. We'll be fine, so don't worry. I know it will be amazing, she said, but I'm scared to death. My daughter and her maid of honor were supposed to organize everything, but they fell through on so many things. I promised I wouldn't be a helicopter mom, but I had to get one of my friends to play the wedding march. My daughter organized the honeymoon, but forgot the airfare. I had to do that, too. She's not ready for the world. What am I going to do? Mom, Nelson pointed to a lady by the wedding cake. Take a step back and a deep breath. You have another issue. What now? She was called away by the lady setting up the wedding cake, and Nelson led me to the white piano. You don't drink? I asked. Nelson was silent a moment, then in a soft voice said, The last time I drank was the weekend I went partying with the guys right after high school graduation. Arrested for underage drinking? I asked. He sort of chuckled, sort of frowned, but when he spoke... The emotion was just barely under the surface. Something worse. Got in a car accident. Totaled my parents' car and was in the hospital for months with a severely broken leg and knee. Remind me later to show you the scars. The police didn't charge me, but it scared me so much that I swore if I ever recovered, I'd never touch the stuff. I take it you recovered? I asked. Mostly, he said, slightly nodding, and then took my hand. My sister and her friends think I'm stupid for never drinking, and it's created a rift between us. My parents and friends understand. I'm hoping you'll understand, too. Something in his eyes spoke of a lot of behind-the-scenes pain. Had this been a deal-breaker with a past boyfriend? A lot of people wouldn't understand. But I understood how deep pain can strike. Maybe that's the common bond, and why the magic flowed between us. We understood each other. We held hands and I quietly said, I don't drink either, can't afford it, so it's not a problem. Tell me about the piano. It's an antique from the 1940s, Nelson said, his shoulders relaxing. He ran his fingers along the polished surface. They've kept it in good shape. I'll be playing the music, but my sheet music is so marked up with my notes and my handwriting is lousy. I wanted you to have a clean copy so you wouldn't get confused. Do you want to practice for a minute? I asked, opening the sheet music his mom had given me. We sat down, and for the next ten minutes we worked through the song, quickly figuring out who would sing which part and which parts we'd harmonize. Nelson was right. His copy was a scribbled mess of notations. We sang a simple practice song to figure out timing and rhythm and a few basic harmonies. The wedding videographer came over and shot a few pictures of us. For the first verse, Nelson said, let's keep the emotion out, seeing it just how it's written. Very plain vanilla, I said, 
but punch it for the end? He smiled and lightly kissed my nose. We take the training wheels off, and we sing it just like we sang last night. Time to fly without a net and make the audience cry. Last night wasn't an act for me, I whispered. I really did feel something. I wasn't acting either, he whispered back, and I won't be acting today. There is something happening between us, and I don't understand it. I gave his hand a small squeeze and said, Let's make it our song, at least for today. Several people stopped to listen to us practice, including the mother of the bride, the parents of the groom, the officiant, and several groomsmen. A few minutes before the wedding, a woman I didn't recognize walked over to us and said, I hate to interrupt perfection, but it's time. Amelia, Nelson said, it's good to see you again. I would like you to meet Quinn Rigby. We met last night and became fast friends and boyfriends all at the same time. He sings even better than me. I remember your name from somewhere, Quinn, Amelia said. Anyway, it's nice to meet you, and I can't wait to hear you sing. Quinn, Nelson said, Amelia was my first piano teacher, music teacher, and vocal coach. She taught me everything, from reading music to learning to breathe and how to play piano. She's the best. Now you're making me blush, Amelia said, but I'll take all the flattery I can get. Amelia traded places with us and began playing Pachelbel Canon in D. Guests took their seats, and Nelson and I took our seats off to the side. Within ten minutes, everybody was in their places. The pianist began playing the traditional wedding march, and the groom took his place on the platform. Everybody stood for the grand entrance of the wedding party. The wedding procession proceeded at a slow, steady pace, led by two five-year-old ring bearers, then two little girls throwing flower petals, then the lineup of groomsmen and bridesmaids, and finally the bride with a very long train. The father of the bride walked beside her, seeming to support her. Is she drunk? I softly asked Nelson. He gave me a wry half-smile and shrugged his shoulders. Wouldn't doubt it. A beautiful, stately affair. The groom couldn't stop grinning, even though he had hangover bags under his eyes. I whispered to Nelson, How many cups of coffee do you think he had? Not enough, Nelson said, taking my hand. The bride held her face expressionless, but she walked a little tipsy. The mother of the bride dabbed at her eyes with a handkerchief. The officiant held a black leather folder that I assumed contained the vows and wedding license. The bride reached the platform, stepped under the arch, and took the groom's hands. Everything was perfect. The pianist finished playing and then left the piano and took a seat by Nelson and me. The pavilion became silent. The officiant stood tall and said, I'd like to welcome you to this special occasion. Before we proceed, we are honored that the brother of the bride and his boyfriend will sing for us. Boyfriend, I whispered. Nelson gave me a cute smile and whispered, We do make a cute couple that makes everybody jealous. The mother of the bride gave a slight nod, and Nelson whispered, Showtime. Then everything wasn't perfect. As Nelson and I approached the white baby grand piano, the bride noticed us. Her expression immediately chilled. Nelson sat down at the piano, organizing his music. I sat next to him, opening my music, and whispered, Ready. The bride let go of the groom's hands. Nelson placed his hands on the piano and softly counted the timing, like we practiced, on four, one, and a two, and a... The bride screwed up her face and walked to the baby grand. Nelson, she said, her voice sounding loud in the stillness. I will be singing this song, not you and your boyfriend. It's my song, not your song, and this is my day. I refuse to let you steal the spotlight like you did last night. That's all everybody could talk about. My little brother singing like some superstar with his boyfriend. No, it's my wedding. Do you hear me? It's my wedding. It's my day. You will play the piano and you will not sing a word. Did she have a rum aura around her? I was right. She had been drinking, and it was only ten in the morning. I looked at Nelson. Nelson looked at his sister, then over at his mom, then back at his sister, and said, 
Sis, we've never talked about this. We've never practiced together. This isn't karaoke, where it doesn't matter if you match the melody or not. You don't know the timing, you don't know the key, and we haven't sung together for years. It will be a disaster. The bride scoffed and said, I didn't say you were singing because you won't. I will sing to the man I love, about my love, about how happy he makes me, and you can't stop me. This is my song. If you want to sing so bad, get your own wedding. Now start playing. The mother of the bride appeared behind the bride, took one sniff and said, Honey, have you been drinking, especially today? I just had a little because I was nervous, she said. The mother of the bride loudly whispered, Take your place by your fiancé and stop holding up your own wedding. I'm not holding up my wedding, the bride said. Nelson is. I want to sing my song to my husband. I want him to know how much I love him. That's not what we planned or practiced, the mother of the bride said. I don't care, the bride screamed. Nelson and his stupid boyfriend are trying to make me look bad on my wedding day. It's my special day, my day, and I will sing my song. Everybody in the pavilion stared at us. I can leave, I whispered. No, the mother of the bride said. Young lady, grow up. Your place is by your man under the wedding arch, not here at the piano. You asked your brother to sing at your wedding, and he's practiced many, many hours to do this for you. I don't care, the bride whined. It's my wedding, and I changed my mind, and I will do what I want, and you can't stop me. The mother of the bride couldn't hide her exasperation as she said, You sound like a five-year-old. How much did you drink? Mom, the bride yelled, Stop ruining my wedding and let me do what I want. I looked at the bride saying, As you wish, but it better be perfect because this is being filmed. She whirled as if she were about to slap me and yelled, What do you know? It's my wedding, not yours. Mine, mine, mine. Why would I want an idiot like you at my brother? Whoever told you that you could sing was lying. A pregnant hippo with diarrhea sings better than you. Stunned, I simply said, It's not your wedding. It is a celebration for you and your future husband. It's his, too. You're stupid. It's my wedding, and my wedding alone. I will sing the song. The bride whined, It's my song, my song, my song. Young lady, you're being rude, and I won't have it, the mother of the bride said. Go stand next to your husband and take his hand before he thinks you're a spoiled brat and dumps you. Now say you're sorry for being rude to Nelson and Quinn, and then say you're sorry to your fiancé right now, and let's get back on schedule. Nelson and Quinn, Nelson and Quinn, the bride yelled. I hate those names. My brother is one step away from living in a wheelchair, and his boyfriend is so low class he can't afford shoes, let alone a suit. Look at that crappy restaurant he works at. Do you think I want these talentless jerks singing at my wedding? I faked like her comments didn't mean anything, but deep down, they cut deep. Knock it off, Nelson said. Do not disrespect my boyfriend. He came to help me celebrate your wedding. Go home, Quinn. I don't want you here. I will sing my song. Understand? My song, the bride screamed. And Nelson, it's my wedding. If you don't start playing, you and your boyfriend are uninvited. She grabbed Nelson's music from off the piano with all the scribbled notes covering it. I think only Nelson could read it now, because no matter how his sister stared at the sheet music, she couldn't find her place. I can't read this, she screamed. Sis, Nelson started to say, you're ruining my wedding, she yelled, tossing the six pages of music in the air. The loose pages fluttered everywhere. The look on Nelson's face was one of pure horror. The look on the mother of the bride's face was one of pure rage. The bride looked like she was about to explode. I knelt and gathered two pages and slowly thought about what to do. Time to take a step back. You're ruining my wedding, the bride screamed. The bride was right. It was her wedding. I gathered two more pages. You're ruining your own wedding, the mother of the bride said. Apologize right now, young lady. The pianist had retrieved the last two pages and handed them to me. Quickly, I organized them and placed them on the piano. I placed my hand on Nelson's and said, If she wants to sing to her fiancé, let her sing. We'll be her backup singers. Are you sure? The mother of the bride said. 
I will sing it by myself, the bride yelled. Keep up then, Nelson, take it from the top, I said. One and a two and a three and a... Nelson began playing the intro. I began softly humming while Nelson harmonized with me, and the mother of the bride quickly took a seat in Nelson's chair. The intro passed. The bride didn't sing. She had missed her cue. Nelson paused and whispered, You can start now, sis. The drunk bride looked at her fiancé and began to sing. It was off tune. She got the words wrong, and her voice was scratchy from partying all night. She was also drunk, and her pronunciation was terrible. Halfway through the first stanza, she suddenly screamed, I forgot the words. We'll take over, Nelson said, and subtly restarted the song. Without the bride knowing what was happening, her mom and the maid of honor led her away from the pavilion, probably to get her the strongest coffee known to man. The mother of the bride gave us a look that suggested we stall for time. Nelson took the song and turned it into something slow and sultry, and we sang. For the first verse, our voices got used to each other. As we entered the first chorus, the emotion began to build. Like last night, the music connected our souls. The song became a thing of beauty. We forgot about the audience, about the occasion, about everyone, except each other. We sang only to each other. Our voices twined together, harmonizing, building, lifting. Our love became tangible and real, and somehow we connected. For the final chorus, we left the piano and sang a cappella. Our eyes were only on each other, our hands clasped tightly together. The magic of the breeze, of the flowing white panels, of the thousands of small lights, hit me somewhere deep. It was impossible, but I wanted someone to hold and hold me. I wanted someone to love and love me. I never realized how lonely I had been, how much I wanted someone in my life. My life had been nothing but trying to survive, but now I wanted more. I wanted someone special. I wanted to love someone. I wanted to love Nelson. Would he even have me? I barely have a family. I barely have any money. For the moment, that didn't matter. I sang with my heart, with my soul. The emotions poured from me, and I cried, because I wanted Nelson to be with me for the rest of my life, and I wanted to be with Nelson. My heart ached because I had never felt this way about anyone. The final chorus ended, but we sang it again. The song became intimate and loving, and a true sharing of souls. Nelson was crying. I was crying. We were professing our love to each other. We ended the song with a kiss, and I whispered, I love you. He smiled and whispered, I loved you first. Just as we finished, the mother of the bride and the maid of honor led a much quieter, humbler bride to the arch, the bride sipped coffee from a red mug. I couldn't tell who was angrier, the mother of the bride or the maid of honor. So many people surrounded and loved the bride and groom. Even through her drunken tantrum, they still cared for her. Nelson and I sat in our seats, and my hand brushed against the fine fabric of his tuxedo. It wasn't anything like the coarse texture of my five-year-old suit. Now that things had settled down, the bride's words haunted me. You can't sing. The officiant started the vows, and a sober bride answered with a simple, I do. The groom likewise. As soon as the ceremony finished, the pianist played some sprightly piece. The slight breeze blew through the white gauzy panels. The tiny white lights seemed to glisten. The bride's words haunted me. You can't sing. Maybe that's why I could never pass an audition. Maybe I'd been fooling myself all these years. The bride, the groom, and their entourage posed for the videographer and the photographer. Nelson joined his family for a set of pictures. The photographer posed them. Look at all of them. The guys in their tuxes. The girls in their bridesmaids' dresses. Then there was Nelson. Now that I knew what to look for, I noticed the slight limp on his right side, the occasional wince as his leg bothered him. 
the styled hair, the casual beauty about him, the way his body moved under the fabric. These people had families and friends and a life. They must travel. They had nice things, new cars. Look at the wedding. A small part of me wanted a wedding, wanted someone in my life, wanted to find someone who I could love and could love me. What was I thinking? These people obviously had money. I didn't. What could I offer them? A disabled grandmother who can barely walk? A wannabe actor-slash-singer who couldn't get past the first callback? And he's also the poorest person in the room? Hooray for the man who works nights, goes to college in the mornings, and stupidly auditions because he thinks he's going somewhere. Yippee, I have one thing going for me. I sing. Except the bride's words haunted me. You can't sing. Maybe Grandma had been right all along, and I should give up on my dreams and get a degree in finance. Look at these people, laughing and joking and having fun. I can't afford to have fun. What am I doing here? They're going to be taking pictures for hours. They don't need me. Face it. The party is over for me. Time for me to go back to the real world. Time to rethink my life. Maybe the reason I can't pass an audition is because I'm not that good. Except for the pianist and the officiant who are also leaving. Nobody noticed when I walked out. Where are you going? the pianist asked. Back to the real world, I said, and climbed into my old car and slowly drove back home. Grandma was in her lounge chair when I entered. I casually tossed my wallet, my keys, and my phone on the little table by the door. You're back early, she said. Then she took one look at my face, stiffly got out of her chair and took my hand. Honey, what happened? Nothing, I said. I sang and came home. Nothing more to say. We sat down at the kitchen table, now holding two baking sheets filled with freshly baked chocolate chip cookies, and she said, I've known you for most of your life. You can't hide anything from me. I knew you were gay before you did. Out with it, and don't lie, because I'll know. Have a cookie and talk. I don't fit in, Grandma, I said. They had their nice clothes and their nice cars and the place was nice. The guys were in tuxes and you should have seen the dresses the girls wore and the cake and the pavilion. It looked like a place fit for angels. I wondered what it would be like if I met someone and I had a wedding like that. Stupid, right? Why would anybody want me? Uh-huh, Grandma said, handing me a cookie. The bride said it best when she called me low class, I said. I'm tired, Grandma. I work all the time and go to school and try to make all the additions I can. But what's the point of trying? You're holding back, Grandma said. I can't ever hide the truth from Grandma. So in a voice barely above a whisper, I said. The bride screamed at me and told me I can't sing. Singing is my dream. Have I been fooling myself all these years? Why is life so hard? Life is what life is, Grandma said, and she scooted her chair next to mine and placed an arm around my shoulders. I ask myself that question all the time, especially since your grandpa passed. I think everybody asks that same question. The trick is not stopping. What do you mean? I asked. Grandma leaned forward to look at the cookies and chose one with the most chocolate chips. She said, Life is a race, but the finish line is different for everyone. It doesn't matter how fast you run or even if you walk or how stylish your clothes are or if you wear a thousand dollar sneakers or cheap ten dollars ones from the thrift store. You just have to plop one foot ahead of each other until you make it to your finish line. Sooner or later, you'll get the job, you'll get the man, or you'll get the audition. And if not, they weren't a good fit anyway, and better you move on than waste your time with them. It means you keep singing, you keep chasing after your dream, and just so you know, I'm proud of you. You've got the prettiest voice of anybody I've heard. But I'm so tired, I said. You can whine about it, or have another cookie and a nap, Grandma said. I'll make your favorite lasagna tonight to make you feel better. I changed out of my nice clothes and into an old t-shirt and shorts and dove onto my bed. It didn't take long before my brain went, lights out. In my dream, I sang with Nelson while we were floating on a magic carpet, flying through golden clouds filled with bright jewels and brighter birds. 
The birds sang with us and flew about us. Nelson and I held hands, and the words to the song seemed to flow through my brain like a waterfall, a poem that made me happy. I don't know how long I slept, but the second I woke, I wrote the odd poem down with a few notes for the melody. The ringing doorbell banished the song, and I immediately forgot the rest. Grandma softly spoke to someone, saying, Come in and have a cookie. I'm Quinn's grandmother, and he's back in his room. Go wake him up. I turned to look at my door and sat up. What is going on? Was I supposed to go into work today and forgot? My boss wouldn't come to my apartment looking for me, would he? It wasn't my boss who walked in. Nelson did. He had left the tuxedo and tie somewhere, but still wore the tuxedo shirt, but it was open at the neck. He sat beside me and whispered, Somebody needs to talk to you right now. Believe me, when Mom gets pissed, she gets pissed. He leaned in and lightly kissed me. Better? Much, I said. Why is your mom mad at me? Is it because I left? Nelson grabbed my hand and pulled me to my feet. We then marched to the living room. The crowded living room. The mother of the bride, the father of the bride, the bride, and the groom sat on the couch or the chairs eating grandma's cookies. The mother of the bride looked very annoyed. The bride seemed very embarrassed. If this is about me leaving the wedding, I asked. The mother of the bride very loudly cleared her throat and said, Yes, it is. The bride, now wearing casual clothes, gave me a flickering smile before she said, It is about you leaving the wedding. You see, I saw the video of drunken me at my wedding. I went full drunk bridezilla and ruined my own wedding. Mom let me have it. My maid of honor let me have it. Even my new husband. Can you believe the things I said? I can't, and I was rude to you. So this is me saying I'm sorry and giving you a year's worth of apologies and begging you to come back all at the same time. You and my brother really did a wonderful job with this song, and you have an amazing voice. I honestly don't know what my problem was, but I upset everybody. I really didn't mean any of the things I said, so call me a jerk or a dork or an insensitive clod. Be mad at me, scream at me, whatever, because I deserve it. But please, forgive me. I really am a nice person, but I guess the wedding has made me crazy. Tell you what, you can have the second piece of the wedding cake right after ours, and lunch is on us, and Nelson said you didn't drink alcohol, so you can have whatever you want to drink, and you can dance with my brother all night, and sing as much as you want, because we have arranged karaoke tonight. You can even bring your grandma. Please come back. I turned to Nelson and asked, How did you know where I lived? Blame an old woman, Grandma said. Your phone rang, and I sort of answered it. Nelson and I got to talking. Grandma, what did you tell him? I asked. Enough to know how bad I messed up, the bride said. And on my wedding day, too. Today was supposed to be perfect, and I keep making a fool of myself. So that's going to stop right now. I'm going to make this right, because Nelson holds a grudge longer than anybody I know. You have to come back. Nelson's eyes widened a little, as if he were saying, Please? I smiled, looked at Grandma, and said, You up for a party? I can't keep up with you young people, Grandma said. So I think a night watching videos and eating cookies is more my speed. But I won't complain to a slice of cake. I know you, I said. As soon as I'm gone, you'll put on a little lipstick, dress in your nicest dress, and invite the gentleman from 305 over for a home-cooked meal. Epilogue Nelson and I were sharing a piece of wedding cake at the reception, sitting a little away from everybody. We spoke about everything. Well, mostly he wanted to know about me, about Grandma, about why my father abandoned me. Nelson asked me an odd question. Your grandma loves to talk. She said you hate weddings. Why? Since we were sharing our pain, I told him the most vulnerable part of me. It reminds me of what I'll never have. I'm not rich. Outside of grandma, I don't have a family. Dad abandoned me 15 years ago. There are plenty of guys in better shape and better looking than me. What can I offer anyone? Nelson had his pain. I had mine. After a slow, sad look, Nelson took my hand and said, 
My grandma only buys the cookie dough. She doesn't make cookies. The wedding might look rich, but my sister and parents will be making payments for the next few years. When I get married, it will be much cheaper and something I can afford. I don't want the debt, but I do want to get to know you. We have fun together. We sing together. I'm falling in love with you, and I think you're falling in love with me. Well, we have might have happened fast, but it's incredible. I won't abandon you. What can you offer? Your music. He warmed my cheeks and tears bubbled in my eyes. He was right. I was falling in love. We danced among the glittering lights, talking and sharing. Between the music and his warmth, the barriers broke down between us. We talked and talked and talked. Then suddenly we kissed. It wasn't a casual peck on the lips, but something that spoke of deep emotion and a deeper commitment. The love that was forming between us would last. Testing, testing, can I have everyone's attention? The bride said from the karaoke platform. The groom stood beside her. The microphone squealed a little before it became still. As soon as the room quieted down, she continued. I was so nervous this morning, I snuck a little bit to drink, and then a little bit more, and then too much. I've seen the video of how I acted, and I owe all of you an apology, especially Nelson and Quinn. Maybe I was jealous of the way they could sing together, or maybe I thought I could do a better job, or maybe I really wanted to sing something special. I am too embarrassed to want to remember why I did it. Nelson, Quinn, I goofed up, and I publicly want to apologize. To make it right, please show us all how good you two are. The karaoke machine awaits. Later, as we were leaving, Amelia walked over to us. Quinn, do you have a moment? Nelson and I stopped to wait for her. Quinn Rigby, she said. I knew I recognized your name and your voice. I made a phone call and learned you've auditioned for us several times. I've auditioned many places, I said. Which place do you mean? Willoughby Community Theater, she said. Not only do I teach piano and voice, but I'm also one of the directories for the Willoughby. I had no idea, Nelson said. She smiled and said, We're a small independent theater and we perform eight plays a year, plus our annual Christmas musical. We have a roster of actors we rotate through, kind of like a weird extended family, and often they might play different parts in the same play. The weirdest example of that was the play Scrooge, when the girl who played Christmas Past also played Christmas Future. Every person on our staff handles multiple responsibilities. For example, it's not uncommon for one of the actors to also handle ticket sales, or build props, or sew costumes, or help with makeup. You have to be flexible. The point is, Quinn, we thought you would be a good fit when you first auditioned for us, but things didn't work out. That's showbiz. And things are changing again. Larry, one of our leads, is moving to Florida in two weeks. We have an opening, if you're interested, that suits your talents. Stop by the theater, Tuesday, early afternoon. Impress us, and the job is yours. Within a week, I was working at the theater. Six months later, at the Christmas Musical Review, I couldn't figure out why Nelson and his family brought Grandma to the Willoughby. That is, I didn't know until, when in the middle of a winter wonderland montage, Nelson walked on stage, the house lights came up, he knelt and asked, Quinn, I have never been as happy as I am singing with you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Would you be my husband? Happily, I said, yes. The end. Thank you, everybody, for sharing this story with me and staying with me till the end. I'm Gio, and I appreciate you joining my channel. We'll see you next Wednesday. Peace.